Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. This should be the last segment of making miniatures before I show you the end project. But I thought maybe you'd like to see what I've been working on, not just cutting up popsicle sticks, I promise. So what this is, is the floor of the diorama slash miniature scene. And it's foam core board. I think it's like a quarter of an inch thick. And I paint the background black so that if you see anything through the popsicle sticks, which are going to be floorboards, it won't be white. And basically all I do is hot glue all of these popsicle sticks to the floor. I like the hot glue because it does stick down really quickly and I don't have to worry about holding things together while I'm waiting for it to dry or anything. So that's kind of great. And because the hot glue is just on the bottom, it's not going to mess up anything I do on top as long as I don't let it squish through the middle of the boards, which I try really hard not to do. Next, I'm going to have to cut off all the extras and it's easier to do once you're already done than trying to cut them all to fit. That just, you don't want to do that. Um, then I'm going to take my craft knife and I'm going to create some separations in the boards. Like there's different little boards in there. And I'm also going to take some little slivers off the side. You know how old wooden floors, they're not perfect. So that's exactly what I wanted this to look like. Now it's time for a good sanding just to get any of the rough edges or little splinters um, all sanded off and get those out of the way because um, they don't make the uh, stain or the paint, whatever you're doing, look very nice if you leave those on there. Instead of staining, I'm going to do a paint wash. So I mix up some red and some green and some water and I turn that into a real thin consistency as you can see it's kind of like hot chocolate and then as soon as I wipe it onto the boards I will stop and um, wipe that most of that off and it does leave a nice staining effect once you're done but you don't have to worry about using stain and because it's acrylic paint it dries really really fast and while I'm at it, I have some little trim boards because I'm going to be making a window. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those stained while I've got this paint ready. But before I make the window, I'm going to make a stone wall. And I knew of this technique, but I couldn't really remember exactly all the steps. So I went to Little Gretchen's workshop and she's a genius, by the way, and has lots of great miniatures to um, tutorials and everything. She's awesome. I'll leave the link below. But this is just an egg carton, as you can probably guess. And I just rip it up into miscellaneous random pieces. And then I take white PVA glue. And that is what I use to stick these together kind of like stones. I will put some glue on the back of each stone and then also on whatever my substrate is that I'm gluing it to. And then once I get it glued down in place where I want it, I go over the top of that with more glue and it kind of smooths and rounds out the edges. I'm trying to remember exactly what Gretchen said. I probably didn't follow her tutorial exactly. So you might want to go watch hers. <laughs> She's the expert. I'm not. But it did make, I think, a pretty believable stone wall once I got finished. As the egg carton gets saturated with the white glue, it becomes more malleable. It will kind of mold in shape and once it gets a little damp, you can even change the shape of it a little bit if you need to, to make it mold around the stone next to it, if you want it to fit a little bit closer. I didn't care too much. I just wanted the edges of the stones to look rounded and kind of craggy. And some of the stones that weren't craggy enough, I would even take little extra pieces 
and then glue those on top of the stones that were already glued down in place to make like little extra raised edges. Once it's dry, I trimmed off the rough edges and even gave it a little bit of a sanding because it, it's gonna fit in kind of a small spot. Once that was done, I made some paint wash in some different colors that were, you know, stone colors. <laughs> which stones come in all colors. So I did kind of this khaki brown. And when I was done with this khaki brown, I added just some red paint to this paint. And I just kept changing it a little bit. And then that way I didn't have to mix up a bunch of different colors in a bunch of different containers. I just kept adding a little bit and making it a little bit different because it it doesn't really matter all that much. I mean, they're rocks, right? They're rocks. And it will get like a, a black wash at the end, which kind of mutes and tones everything down. So I'm trying not to be too particular and too over analytical about it because it's gonna change at the end and it'll all be okay. Once that is all dry, I take this matte varnish or you can use matte medium. I like matte. You could probably use a satin as well. Uh, you could use gloss too if you wanted, but I like the matte because it does have a tiny bit of a sheen to it anyway, but I paint this all over to seal that all in. And then next comes the grouting, the cementing, which I'm just going to use some joint compound like you would use for drywall but you could probably use all kinds of things, modeling paste, spackle. And once you get that all smeared over really, really well, put the lid on because it'll dry out. I'll take some dry paper towels and wipe off the excess. And once I'm done mostly with that, I will take damp paper towels and go over that and try to clean off the stones a little bit more. Once that was done, I took just an old craggy paintbrush and I would dip it into just some dirty water, some paint water I had. And then I would clean off more of this wet joint compound um, from the tops of the stones before it dries. Once it dries, it'd be a lot harder to get off. So I do this when it's all damp and can be easily wiped away. Again, I'm probably being a little bit too particular here. That black wash that we do at the end would darken up this joint compound anyway, but I wanted a lot of the color of the rocks to show through. So that's why I'm kind of taking my time and getting most of that joint compound off the top of the stones. Next, I'm going to do this black wash. And basically, it's just some black and brown paint with more water than paint. Just, you know, it's dirty water. <laughs> and I just go over all of those stones and then I blot it off. And I do this a couple of different times to darken up that grout in between. Next up, I'm going to plaster the walls that are going to be going into this uh, miniature vignette. I'm going to use the same drywall compound that I used before. And I pretty much just smear on a thin coat all over the area that I need it to be on. And then once I get that finished, I take the back of the spatula and I pounce it all over the surface to create little peaks. And all three walls pieces that I have will be done the exact same way. Smear it on, get it all coated, and then pounce to make the little peaks. I let it dry for just a few minutes just to get like a light crust. And then I take the back of the spatula and I run that flat across those peaks to knock them down and it makes a nice plaster texture. Then with some fine sandpaper, I go over all three pieces and smooth everything out. And then this kind of knocks down anything that's too rough. You don't have to do this part, but I think it helps to blend everything together. Next, I'm going to take this kind of a, 
so it's going on like a golden khaki it dries down to a little bit more of a like a green more of a green khaki than a brown khaki and I go over all three pieces and I try to fill up all the little holes in the plaster because it is a rough surface there's going to be little holes so I take my time and I coat everything thoroughly and then I make sure to pounce and make sure that the paint is all embedded down into those uh, nooks and crannies. The last step will be going over the top of all of this completely with a slightly watered down, it's like a pale, pale tan or a pale taupe color that I had. And it is watered down, not like the wash that we used before, but a little bit of water is added to it to thin it out. And before it dries, I take a damp paper towel and I buff the entire surface. And it takes the, I would say the majority of it off, but it leaves a little bit of a haze. And I just love the way it looks when it dries. On to the window. I drew out uh, the shape that I wanted on some wax paper. Then I put a piece of vellum over the top and I taped that down. Then I took my little wood pieces that I had already kind of cut to size for the most part and I started building the window. These little wood pieces that you see me gluing down are made from stirring sticks that I cut the round edges off of and stained with that paint wash and I'm gluing this into this tall rectangle shape that will encase the entire window. And that is the window sill. At least that's what I hope it translates as when I'm done. And then that is the trim piece below the window sill that I'm adding next. After that is all stuck on, I'm going to add the frame trim around the edges of my window just with some regular white glue. Um, again, it's stirring sticks, so it's not very heavy and the white glue holds it just fine. You probably see that extra little piece of wood beside that I just moved. That's just to help me hold up the molding edge, the frame trim so that it doesn't, you know, like fold down or so it's nice and flat. And this is the last piece that goes across the top and I'm using my little miter shears, which I love those, love those. They make life a lot easier. They're on my Amazon favorites list in the tools section, I believe. So this window is going to be broken up into two different sashes. So it will look like it opens. You'll see here in a minute. So what I'm measuring out and gluing in right now are the side pieces for the upper casement or sash, whatever. But anyway, um, that is gonna be the top window. These are really skinny pieces. I think they are like three millimeters, you know, 16th of an inch. And I actually got these in a packet of miscellaneous hobby wood at Joann's. It was all on sale and I got it for just a couple of bucks, so I grabbed it. It sure did make life easier than trying to slice down the coffee stirs down to this size, because wow. That would, that'd be crazy. Because these are the little panes that, you know, go in windows. And I'm able to glue it down onto the vellum and then the vellum becomes like the glass. I didn't want to be able to see through the glass anyway. So um, the vellum works great. That's what I used in um, the book nook too. This is the other window sash that's going to go on the bottom and look like it opens and so I cut all these pieces to fit a little teeny tiny window that will fit on the bottom. Sorry my head's in the way but it was very precise work. You know you're going crazy and your eyes are crossing at this point so I was glad that this was almost finished. Once that is all glued together then I cut both windows away from the vellum and then that bottom sash fits right on top of the other one in the window. As you can see with that trim that goes around all the edge, then the window can fit 
inside a wall, just like a real window would, but you don't see anything but just the trim. Kind of looks like a real window. Well, I hope you enjoyed those projects today. I am nearly done with this miniature vignette and I can't wait to show you. The end of the year sale is coming up soon, mostly because, well, it's the end of the year. But I'll let you know all about that when I post the next video. Thank you all for joining me today. Thanks for hanging out and watching me play around with glue. <laughs> I hope everybody is having an excellent week. And I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>